Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. If you're like me, you probably go to the zoo quite often to take photographs of the animals. One problem you'll always encounter at a zoo are chain link fences. Uh, they could be the bane of your existence. Your best bet to try to minimize the chain link fence is to get your camera as close to it as possible, use the longest focal length possible, and use the widest aperture possible. Uh, for this specific image of the vulture, I got my camera as close to the chain link fence as I could. It happened to have on it a 200 to 500 f of 5.6 lens. I did have a 1.4x teleconverter on here as well, so I shot this at 600 millimeters. Now I mentioned another thing you could do is use the widest aperture possible. This is an f5.6 lens, but as soon as I put on that 1.4x teleconverter, the widest it would go is f8. So I had to shoot this at f8, and you could see that I still have a little bit of the chain link fence showing up in this image. Underneath the beak here, you could see it's kind of going up this way. Pretty obvious there. Maybe a little bit on the cheek of the uh, vulture as well. Well, I found that you could minimize this further in post-production, and in today's video I'm going to show you what you need to do to try to minimize this chain link fence. What I do is I'll start out and I'll just edit as I normally would. Now this image is slightly overexposed, so I'm going to do what I often do for an image that is over or underexposed, is I'll take highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up, and I actually have a video on this technique when you have an overexposed or underexposed image. Uh, then I'll go to exposure and I'll just pull it down till it looks like it's exposed correctly. Then I'll get a white point. Uh, the way I like to do it in Lightroom is to hold in the option key on my Mac. It's Alt key on a PC. And when I click on the whites slider, I'll get this completely black screen. And I'll just tweak this up until I see some color come through. That means I'm starting to blow out the highlights in those areas. So I'll back this off until all that color dissipates. Then I'll do the same thing for black. So I'll hold in that option key on my Mac, Alt key on the PC, click on the black slider, I'll get a white screen, and I'll start moving this to the left. And as I see some color come through in those areas, I'm crushing the shadows. And I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit, so I'll even just eyeball it and bring it down a little more. But I still have this issue here. You could see the fence specifically right here underneath, I guess, the uh, neck or in the neck area of the bird. So what I'll do is I'll add a little texture as I normally would, a little clarity. Then what you'll find is that if you move either contrast or dehaze, that will help minimize this as well. I prefer to go to dehaze and I'll do it and you can see how it's minimizing it a little bit. So we're getting there. And then to kind of finish off this part of my editing, I'll add a little bit of saturation. So, so far so good. Uh, there's before and there's after. You could see that I minimized it quite a bit, but it's still pretty noticeable uh, in this area right here. So what I do is I'll get a mask and specifically I'll get a brush and I'll take the flow of the brush and I'll take it down to around 50%, 40 to 50. Then I'll go and I'll take contrast all the way up. Then I'll take my brush and size it as needed and I'll add this brush stroke in here to try to minimize it. Now I have flow at 47% right now, so every brush stroke adds to it. Then what I'll do, once I think I have the area painted that I need to have painted, is I'll come in here and I'll do what's needed to try to minimize it. Now it seems to be a little bit brighter than it should, so like maybe highlights would affect it. So I'll take highlights down. I'll go to the whites and take that down a bit. I'll go to the blacks and take that. Oh, that's kind of making it a little bit unruly. I don't like that, but that kind of looks a little better. So we'll come in here. And if you think that you overpainted an area, like maybe I got a little bit of the bottom part of the beak that I shouldn't have got, what I can do is I click, click on erase, or I could just hold in that alt option key and I'll temporarily get a minus brush and I'll have the flow at a hundred on this minus brush and I'll 
I'll remove it, anything I did there. So that's pretty much it. I'll come in here and maybe get in there a little bit. I could get a smaller brush, maybe come in here a little bit, try to minimize this line as much as possible. And that looks pretty good right there. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So that's how I try to minimize a chain link fence that I had to shoot through to take the photo of the animal in a zoo. Again, I'll just uh, mention again that to try to minimize it in camera, what you're going to want to do is to get that camera as close to the chain link fence as possible. If your lens could get right up and shoot through the, like a, the you know hole in the chain link fence, that would be best. But try to get your camera as close as possible. Use as long a focal length as possible and use as wide open an aperture as possible. And those three factors will help minimize that fence. Then in post-production, do what I did here. Do your editing as normal and go to either the dehaze or the contrast slider. And as I mentioned, I prefer to use dehaze usually. It's a little more heavy-handed though. And you may find that it will adversely affect the image. If it does, then do contrast instead. If you still have some remnant of that fence showing up as I did in this image, then go to masking and put the flow at 50%, contrast all the way up, and then come in and paint the areas that are affected. Then move any other sliders that you think may help. In this case, I moved like highlights down and I think I brought shadows down a little bit and whites down and that seemed to minimize it. You could always come back in and readjust this if you uh, come in. So click on the mask again so it's active and you could come in and try to move things around a little more, see how you could try to better adjust this. Now you could go to effects. There's dehaze here, but I found that this is often a little bit too heavy handed in this case, but you can give that a little bit of a, a you know, movement as well. See if it helps. So that's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.